The crowd in CLI is a tool that lets you manage your crowd and project. So most of the things you would usually do on the crowd and web app can be done using the terminal instead. One of the most common use cases for the CLI is essentially to keep your local resources, all your translations in sync with crowd in. And of course you can do this from the terminal or you can set it up to be all automated using your CI server. Today we're gonna to be having a look at the basics of the CLI. We're just gonna set it up from scratch locally and just have a look at a few of the commands. So let's get right into it. First thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna install the CLI tool and prerequisite, there is a requirement for Java. So I'll let you follow the instructions here and just make sure once you can hit Java version, you've got something above Java 8, I've got Java 17 here, then you're good to go. So I'm working on Mac, so I'm just gonna use the brew command here to install this. But if you're on any other platform, you can just head over to the documentation and you'll see the instructions on how to install it there. So I'm just gonna make a project here for this demo. I'm just gonna call this CLI demo. And I'm also going to make a folder for the locale. So let's just assume you have a project here and you store all your locales in uh, this locale directory. And the first locale I'm gonna add is this English one. And I'm just gonna paste this in here. And this is essentially just a bunch of keys and values, right? So some of these values don't really need translated. So this is just a, a key, a number, doesn't really need translated, same with some of the names, but you can see some of the text here. So let's just assume you had some of the text from your website here that does need translated. So I'm just gonna save this uh, and head back. So all we have now is a directory with uh, locale directory inside and my English translations. Great, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna initialize our crowd and project. So we can just hit crowd in init and that's basically just gonna ask us if we want to configure this project as a crowd and project as well as authorize using the browser. So I'm just gonna hit yes on the authorization here. I'm gonna click into crowd and I'm just gonna log in with my credentials here. So just hit login. And now it's gonna ask me for a project ID. Now we've not created a project yet. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna head back over to uh, crowdin.com. And we're just gonna create our project and then we'll come back and pop in the, the project ID. So if I just head over to my uh, profile here, I'm just gonna create a project and I'm gonna call this CLI demo, let's just add um, English is the main one. So we'll add just another language here, German. I'm gonna just keep, keep it like that for now. So let's just create this project. And once that's done, we can take away the project ID. So the ID here just on the main page, you can just take this ID and that's gonna be the ID of your project. So I'm just gonna move this to the side here. I'm gonna paste in the ID. I'm gonna hit enter again here for the project directory and that should be it. So if I just clear this, and if I just uh, look at the directory structure now, we can see that it's created this crowdin YAML file. So let's just jump into that. This crowdin YAML file is essentially uh, our configuration file for the crowdin project. And if we kind of scroll down a bit here, we can see there's, there's quite a lot of things going on. Um, there's a lot of commented blocks. This is just a big YAML file with a lot of different configuration items. We don't need most of these. So I'm just gonna clean this up and we'll just see what's left. And there you go. And you can see here, what's actually left is quite minimal. So the, the minimum you need is, is quite kind of simple. And I'll go over all, all these configurations, but what you can do is you can um, head over to the documentation. And if we just go to, let's just expand this a bit here, we can go to the configuration file and you can kind of scroll down and see all the different kind of configurations um, there are for the project. So if we just start off by explaining what's going on here. So the, the project ID, of course, is the ID of the, the crowd and project that this is linking to. We have an API token for um, authentication or authorization. We have the base path, which is basically the, the base path of the, the current working directory. So everything that you add in terms of files, which we'll go over later on is, is relative. So it always starts off of the, uh, the base path. So we're just saying start in the current directory. Uh, we have the base URL, so this is just in case you've got enterprise level account, in which case you might have a different uh, project URL. And then we have preserve uh, hierarchy. So this just maintains the uh, project hierarchy when you look into the, uh, the crowd and view. One of the main things uh, worth pointing out here is, of course, these are all in plain text. What if you wanna do it from environment variables? Well, if you just scroll down in the documentation here on the right hand side, you can read uh, directly from environment variables. So there's a way that crowd and will, will basically do that for you. But basically for these uh, top four IDs here, instead of just having the, the word as is, you can just kind of suffix this with a underscore env and then you give it the uh, environment name. And then basically that way it'll just pick up the uh, an environment variable with that name instead of the, the, the literal value here. So next up, let's add our file. So basically we need to tell the, the product where to get the, the source files from uh, and where to place the, the translation. So here we know that, if I just uh, come back out here, we know that we've got the English translation in local slash en json. So if I just jump back into here. We can just uh, head over to the, the source here. And if you just have a look at the, actually we can refer to the documentation. In fact, we can just write down to writing a simple configuration file. You can kind of see an example here. So we can see here, you basically just give it the, the source and there's a few kind of placeholders which we'll look into in a moment. So for us, we know that's just gonna be starting off the base path. So it's the current directory slash locale slash en json. So we don't need to do any placeholders here because we know it's just the, the, the specific file. But then when it comes down to the translations, we know that whatever translation we want, we essentially want a file 
with the two letter code. So just like EM to be placed in the same directory. So what we can do local slash, and then we can add in this placeholder value. And again, if you go back to the documentation, you can see a list of placeholders that you can use. So the one that we're looking for here is the two letters code. So let's just take this and then we want dot JSON. So that's telling Crowdin where to find the source translation, which is the English one. And then if there are any other translations that uh, we are managed through Crowdin, this is where we're going to place them. So I can just save this here and now we can start having a look at some of the Crowdin commands. So if you just hit the Crowdin command, it's gonna basically tell you how to use the CLI. The very first thing we're gonna do is, well, let's ha let's do a, a quick Crowdin list. So if we do Crowdin list here, which is one of the commands, uh, it's actually gonna show you some more sub commands because we need to tell it what to list. So we can list the sources, for example, we can list the, the translations. So in terms of sources, of course, we've got English translations. The only one we've added is the um, the German translation, but there's, there's nothing really there yet. So one of the first things you want to do is that you actually just want to push the source file that you have. So we've not actually told it, you know, what, what are the translations, what are the keys that we're translating. And of course, that all still lives in our enjson file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, crowd and push, and then we can come back into the project here. And what we'll see is essentially all the keys that we've pushed from enjson. And if we just refresh this page, we can see hopefully uh, the, the directory structure, first of all, uh, and then if we jump into enjson here, um, or the, the strings, we'll be able to see all the strings that uh, that need translated. So if we go back to uh, dashboard now, um, we can still see the uh, German language, and we can see that it's on 0%. And again, this is all stuff that we can see from the Crowdin uh, CLI. So if we can do Crowdin CLI, um, and we run this status command, it'll basically show us the same thing. It'll show us that uh, we have a, a German translation, but it's all on 0%. So what we can do is we can just head over to the uh, pre-translation. I'm just gonna use the machine translations here. I'm just gonna use the, the Crowdin Translate. I'm just gonna select on the languages and I'm gonna select the files. This may be a topic for another video. Again, this is all doable in the CLI, also in Crowdin, but this is basically just going to translate all the keys using the kind of the, the engine within uh, Crowdin itself. So pre-translation is completed. So that's great. If I just refresh this, you can see this at uh, 100%. So that's perfect. So basically the question is here, how do you pull down the translations? Well, you can again just use the uh, the Crowdin pool command. So use Crowdin pool and just leave it for a moment. We can see here that it's basically downloaded the uh, German file. And again, if I just uh, cut out the German file here, we can see that it's it's basically uh, done some of the <laughs> some of the translations uh, automatically for us. Perfect. So just as a kind of a final recap here, we initialized the Crowdin project, which gave us a Crowdin YAML file. This is basically the, the configuration of the project itself. Typically, you would check this into source control and therefore you can kind of manage or you can run all these commands on your CI server. Then we had our own project files, which in this case happened to be a EN JSON file. And we, we pushed that up into Crowdin. Some translations happened. Again, that's outside of the, the development lifecycle typically. And then what we can do locally or wherever you need to, you can then pull down the, the translations. Note here that it's kind of common to essentially only have the English translations or keys in your kind of local machine, you would ignore all the translations so that way you don't push up conflicts, etc. The, the kind of the rule of thumb here is that the web app is the, the source of truth. That's where all the translations get pushed. And the source of truth for the English translations is of course the, uh, the, the source control repository, in this case, our repository here in English. Now, um, I'd just point towards the uh, documentation here. There's a lot more things going on here, which we might cover in other videos. But for now, this is hopefully enough to show you around the basics and give you an idea of what's possible. And yeah, I think I'm going to wrap up there. So Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.